Hey guys, welcome back to a, another episode in my tips and strategies for PUBG. Uh, in this game, we're actually going to kind of look at um, how I kind of approach the game when the game is ending in a city, because there's a couple rules that kind of apply to myself um, for basically how it is I, I sort of enter into a city, you know, the things I'm trying to do when I'm in there. So we're going to kind of just start straight into uh, this game. And we're at the, the midway point. This ends up being the first guy that uh, I encounter. And it is Muxus Hine or something. I, I don't know how you say this guy's name. But anyway, um, I am in uh, uh, this area down here. I jumped here, moved down, and uh, all of a sudden I see this guy come down. So I'm, I'm down in sort of the southern part of where the circle is. And uh, I had been in the circle from the beginning of the game. And so now is really the first time where I'm going to have to kind of move out. So I see this guy coming in, and the funny thing was, this is since the update, and he's got a level 3 helmet, a level 3 backpack, and so he's only going to get the level 3 helmet from a crate, or if he had killed someone who had been uh, at a crate, but he didn't have a, a weapon, he didn't have like the Groza or the AUG or the, uh, you know, the MK, he, he didn't have anything, he, the guy had an M16 and the UMP, so I don't know how he didn't have uh, the gun, but he didn't. So anyway, I'm in this warehouse. Uh, I take this guy down, and the nice thing about being in these warehouses, um, if you're ever in one of these, is if you're kind of setting traps and waiting for someone um, who's going to come in, um, to there's like three different areas to basically get elevated. And typically, when people enter into these buildings, they, they don't look up. They're kind of just looking uh, eye level or on the ground. So it's pretty easy to basically just take somebody out uh, at that point. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward up to this next section. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of move up here. So this game is actually going to end in Impala. And so we're going to kind of look at some of the ways that I'm, I try to get in there, sort of uh, uh, what happens, what takes place. So... Uh, I end up leaving here. I move up the road. Uh, I have an encounter. Uh, actually, well, I, I take that back. I don't have an encounter with Gunter, UDC, down here. Um, he and I end up being ridiculously close to one another, and we don't actually see one another. Um, we didn't see each other. We didn't hear each other. Uh, it just kind of worked out that way. Uh, I sort of see him at the last moment as I work my way into this next circle. So you can see where it is, and so uh, I end up running up the road here, and when I run up the road, I'm trying to get over onto this side. I don't want to end up over here, and the whole reason I don't want to do that is if there had been anybody in these buildings, th th most likely they would pop out over onto this side and kind of be waiting in this area. Um, so what I'm trying to do is actually pop up over on this side, because I think it'll be a little bit safer uh, for me to kind of come into the circle late so you can see right here where Gunter's trailing me but he doesn't know he's trailing me uh, we've got the uh, uh, I'm sort of elevated uh, or I mean he's elevated against where I'm at uh, compared to where I am I'm down kind of below and he just doesn't see me so uh, I end up getting up into the next circle I take a little bit of damage from the blue zone um, but it's not enough that it's really a problem and sort of the funny thing is uh, as I'm working my way up uh, at the last moment I get around the corner here and I see Gunter there on my left but he doesn't see me <clears throat> do 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 and I kind of see this guy right here, right in front of me, right there on the road, but he doesn't see me, and I'm like, oh, geez, I'm out wide in the open, so I try to get to some cover, I go ahead and heal up, and I'm trying to see if this guy sees me or not. So I look out, <clears throat> and I see him, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I see him move up to those trees, and once I see him move up to the trees, that's when I know, like, okay, this guy did not see me. He does not know where I'm at. So I want to look real quick at a guy, uh, Moof Vapor. And this is definitely a mistake. Uh, you do not want to do what this guy is currently doing. Um, here's what he did. Now, he had worked 
his way up through here, had gotten through this area without getting taken out. And he, he's trying to get down over to here and then to move up into Impala. Now, he's going the exact way that I'm trying to go. Now, I want to move up and work my way over and pop up over here. Uh, I think it's a better way to get into Impala rather than coming uh, basically from the left from where I'm at, coming from the south. It's such a wide open area that it's really easy to get sniped. So the problem for Moof is instead of going on foot, <laughs> coming down here and moving up, he finds a motorcycle and he gets on a motorcycle and I, for the life of me, can't figure out what he was thinking. Because it's sort of the last thing you want to do. We're going to slow it down so you can kind of see what he does. Uh, try to get a little bit of... <laughs> so what he doesn't know is that McNasty is right down here. And McNasty's moving over. Here's the motorcycle. Ends up seeing um, Moof come down. And we'll set it a little bit faster. And I don't know how Moof didn't run him over. And I don't know how McNasty didn't get him down. Misses him right there, so kind of look at it from Moof's point of view. You can see how much health this guy has. It's barely anything. And he gets some air right up here. Makes this jump, but unfortunately for him, Loopy Beast is right there at the top and takes him out. So, McNasty is also running up the hill, and now I am coming over, and I'm trying to get to where it is that I need to be in order to get up uh, over here on the side. So, I end up moving up. I can hear gunshots to my right, so I know that I'm probably going to have to get into a fight. Uh, there's 48 seconds. Now, there's plenty of time for me to get to the circle, but if I have to get into a prolonged fight, that's going to be a problem. So, go ahead and uh, kind of fast forward here so I can hear gunshots to my left, gunshots to my right. And I come around the corner and I end up seeing this guy right down here. Now, the problem for me is I have to fight this guy. There's no way around it. Um, there's 18 seconds left. So, I'm looking at how much time is left and I realize, like, okay, I got to go. So, I've got to basically get into a fight with this guy. I got to take some shots. Try to line up a headshot, get the headshot. It's not enough to get the guy down. And so I did enough damage that JC Caleb here, he has to kind of wait and uh, get healed up. Problem for him is he ends up uh, not being quick enough and does not get into Impala and he dies to the play zone. Uh, so I uh, am kind of looking for him and I don't see him. Uh, I make a beeline. Now, here's the problem when you come into Impala, and it doesn't really make a difference where you come in. Uh, anywhere you come in, there's a good chance that there's going to be somebody in these windows who are looking. And sure as the world, Loopy Beast is the guy that uh, ends up uh, seeing me. He's right in here, and he'll end up moving back. And he ends up having the scope on his gun. He would have been better off having the red dot. And he actually kind of corrects this mistake because once he sees me uh, and he's not able to get me down, he switches over to the red dot. So he did a little bit of damage. Now he switches over. It's just a little too late at this point. Uh, I am behind here. I'm behind uh, this um, container. Okay, so the last thing I, I kind of want to explain about something that's sort of different with how I approach a city as compared to being out in the open. Now, when I'm out in the open and I see somebody and I'm advancing to the circle, um, what I tend to do is I try to get exactly behind them and I want to follow their exact path they're going. The reason for that is because people tend to never look exactly right behind them. Even when they have their free look, um, they can't see exactly behind them. Uh, they can look back to the right and to their left, but not directly. So it's a little bit different when you're in a city. Now, I still kind of want to use other people for information. So what I'm doing at this point is I see McNasty over here. I see where this guy is, 
And what I want to do is the moment I see him, I make a break for it. Because what I want to do is I want to get behind this guy, but not directly behind this guy. What I want to do is to be basically running parallel to where he is. The reason for that is if I get exactly behind him and I don't see what building he goes into or I don't see him stop, all of a sudden if I'm running right behind him, he's going to hear me, he's going to pop out, boom, take me out. But if I can run parallel to what to where he is, if there's anybody basically in front of us, sort of in between, they're going to either see him or hear him first. They're going to exchange fire, and that's going to give me some information. So the moment I see this guy, I start to move over, and I'm trying to run parallel to him. So I book it through this open area, and there's a guy in this building who ends up hearing me and seeing me, but he's not really in the best position to take shots. And so you'll kind of see it from his perspective. Uh, I run right in front of him, and I don't take any damage um, from these shots. So if you've watched my videos before, you know I'm not a big believer in getting into buildings, especially late in the game. Um, but right here, it makes sense for me to jump into a building because I'm taking fire. Um, I, I need to get to cover. I hop into that building. AK ends up moving around. He ends up moving into the building right next to me. And so I know that he's right over there. Uh, he runs into this building, etc., etc. So I'm just trying to wait to see exactly what this guy is going to end up doing. So let's go ahead and just kind of look to see where some other people end up. Uh, McNasty ends up working his way over to here. Now what ends up happening to him is uh, Gunter, who we saw earlier. He is in this building. He's right there in that window. Man, McNasty's going to run right in front of him and he's going to take him out um, so there's a minute and three seconds uh, left at this point and so I'm in no rush to get into the next circle there's no point uh, I don't need to go just yet Gunter goes down McNasty gets him um, so it's always delayed reaction with the sound I don't know why it does that but uh, Loopy Beast is over here taking shots at Professor Hagrid, who was uh, kind enough to leave Hogwarts and come join us in this game. Uh, so, AK is still over here. He is taking shots at Gunter, and he kind of makes a little bit of a mistake here. He jumps through this window, and I don't know that he really should have jumped into the window, um, but once he pops in... Um, uh, Gunter is just waiting for him and is able to just lean in and, and take him out. So we're now down to uh, five people. And so to kind of show you what's going through my head at this point. So we're down to five people. I can hear shots. So I know that there there's somebody basically going to be right in this building. I could hear those shots. I know that there's somebody else over on this side who was shooting, which was Loopy Beast which means whoever he's shooting at is going to be somewhere over here too. Uh, so there's really only one guy unaccounted for, and that ends up being Zoidberg. Uh, and now Zoidberg had a great game, this game. Um, he was taking out people. He, he just was playing great. Um, and he unfortunately sort of runs into a mistake at the end, which isn't really a mistake. Um, it's just sort of, he, he, he we'll, we'll kind of show. It's not really a mistake on, on his part. Uh, it's just something he thought was happening but wasn't actually happening. Uh, at least I think so. So Zoidberg hops down there. I don't see him. So, guys, again, I try not to get into buildings here at the end. Uh, I want to be on the outside. I don't want to be on the inside of a building. The reason I don't like being in buildings is because... If you jump through a window, break the glass, everyone hears it, they know where you are. If you open up a door that has a distinct sound, they know the sound, they know where you are. Um, plus, if you're behind a window, okay, granted, you've got cover from the walls, but the problem is um, you don't really have a wide uh, sort of area to, to shoot. You don't have the best angles. So that's why I don't like getting into buildings is I, I think I'm more of a, at a disadvantage than at an advantage. Uh, Zoidberg had seen Professor Hagrid down there at the bottom of the road, um, doesn't uh, get him down, he disengages, moves back up the hill, and starts to come around. Okay, so 
what's currently going on uh, with me at the moment is I can hear this guy right in here. So I work my way around and I sort of position myself in such a way to be able to chuck a grenade uh, without being seen. Uh, I do a lot of damage to Gunter. I don't get him down though from this grenade. I don't really know how I didn't. I move around to the other side of the wall. All of a sudden, Loopy Beast pops up on my right. And I take a buttload of damage, but it's not enough to get me down. Now, here's the situation as it kind of unfolds. Now, Zoidberg is moving up. He knows that I just chucked in that grenade. Um, the funny thing is, Gunter is right here in the corner trying to heal up. Zoidberg is advancing. He knows that I'm somewhere over here. He might have even just seen uh, Loopy go down. Now, I end up hearing Zoidberg coming, so when I hear Zoidberg move... I move over and I actually get some shots on him. So I do a little bit of damage to him. So he goes for cover, runs inside, all of a sudden starts taking fire from uh, Gunter. It's not enough because he's got the sweet gun and he ends up taking him out. Now, right here ends up being what I is a mistake, but it's not really a mistake because it's not his fault. He uh, he's taken Zoidberg's taken a, some damage here. He needs to heal up. The problem that he's got is he doesn't have any first aids, uh, and the reason I say that is because he ends up using the syringe boost. The only reason he would be using that rather than a first aid kit uh, or bandages is because he doesn't have any more. So where the blue zone is coming in, I think what's going through his mind is he doesn't know exactly where the blue zone is going to end. So. It ends up stopping short, but he ends up jumping through this window. Now, he knows where I'm at in my general area. So you can see the blue zone stop, but he goes ahead, jumps through the window, and Haggard is down here, sees him move, and he's able to get him down. So I, if Zoidberg doesn't jump through that window, there's a good chance that he ends up pulling out the, the, the win in this game because he was playing just phenomenally well. Uh, but he doesn't, and um, I, it's just sort of bad luck more than you know making a mistake uh, for where he thought the uh, uh, blue zone was going to end. So we get down to the uh, final two of us. We're heads up, and I am positive that this guy sort of is in the area that he is. Now, uh, I didn't realize that he was down um, below this wall, uh, I chucked a couple grenades over here. Now, I'm positive that this guy is not over in this area. I'm positive that he's not right on my right. Uh, so you can kind of see where I'm at and where I'm looking. And what I'm thinking is this guy, based on where I heard those shots, is he's right over by this RV. So what this guy ends up doing, what Hagrid does, is he goes ahead and he chucks a grenade and then he throws a smoke grenade. He moves up here and gets actually to the place where I thought he was originally. Um, so I hear a little bit of movement, and when I hear the movement, I say to myself, okay, this guy's actually moving. He doesn't know where I'm at. Um, I'm sort of in the shadows here. This is the final circle, so you know it's, it's not closing in anymore. I don't need to move at this point because he doesn't know where I'm at. So he chucks the smoke grenade, uh, which worked out really well. Uh, he ends up advancing, gets to the top. And we're going to kind of look at this from my point of view and then from his point of view. And this is sort of the huge advantage in having a suppressor on your uh, rifle. Um, so this guy, I mean, Haggard played really, really well and sort of putting himself in a good position. Um, the problem just ends up being, um, you know, he just doesn't know where I'm at. Look at it from my point of view. So I'm just in a good elevated position. I'm well hidden, and I end up seeing movement there on my right. And when I see the movement, pull up my sniper rifle, and I would have preferred to have like a, a, a three scope at this point. Um, but I'm using the four scope. Uh, well, it's the eight scope, but it's zoomed out. And I get the chicken dinner right there. So I'm shooting through the grass, through the window, and I'm able to get this guy down. Now, half the reason that this guy did not even uh, ret return fire 
uh, is because I have the suppressor. He, you know, even if I had had a uh, flash, um, that probably would have been enough for him to not know where I was either. Even though he would have heard the shots, it would have been a little more distinct. Um, so we just kind of want to look at it from his perspective. He's got the SLR. Um, he's trying to find me. He's looking for me. And, uh, you know, he just doesn't see me. So I'm going to kind of slow it down to um, just a little bit so you can kind of see. So looking at it from his point of view, he does not see me. He moves out. Right there is when I saw him. I take the shots, and there's no flash. He does not know where I'm at. And I'm able to get that guy down because he just he just doesn't see me. He just doesn't know where I'm at. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope it was entertaining, and I hope maybe uh, at least I explained at least a little bit and how my mind kind of works when I'm moving into a city and I'm trying to use somebody else to run parallel to where they are. Um, I'm still trying to use that person. I'm trying to gain information from that person, but I don't want to get right behind them because I can't even tell you how many times in the past I kind of learned from my mistakes where I trail somebody in a city and they stop, hear me coming, pop out, and boom, I'm gone. So, alrighty guys, uh, thanks so much for watching and we will catch you next time. See ya.